Hello and welcome to another video in this uh, series looking at the basic steps of setting up a Windows network uh, in a small business, an organization or even an office environment. It's a good idea to have centralized management of user accounts and also centralized data storage and printing and other resources. Okay, so today we're going to be taking out um, our server here, uh, which in this case is running Windows 2003 and changing it to a domain controller. Now, a domain controller allows access to resources on the domain or the network, um, such as uh, user accounts and so forth. Okay, so um, first of all, as, uh, as you can see, uh, I'm uh, logged in as the administrator, and uh, this is a Windows Server 2003. We've already got the basic install um, done. We've given it a name. We've given it an IP address. We've configured the network. Um, if we just have a quick look. Uh, control panel and go to network connections. You can see that the local area network is actually connected. And I'll just go to that. You can see it connected here um, and everything's fine. Um, so that's quite an important step. So I'll close, he close that. Now, um, uh, what we're actually going to do today is um, making it into a domain controller, and there's a number of ways of doing that. Uh, one way we can actually go to uh, start administrative tools and then we've got um, a couple of options either configure your server or manage your server now I'm going to click on manage your server both ways are very similar and we get the manage your server um, wizard that comes up and up the top here we've got the server name LRC server 1 which is the name we already gave the uh, server when we first installed Windows 2003 uh, and you can see down here that we have um, the server roles and we've only got one server role at the moment it's a file server and this button up here um, add or remove a role now we're actually going to want to add a role we want to um, add it as a domain controller um, before we do that though I just want to show you another way of actually doing that we can actually do it from the command line we can go to start we can click on run and then we can actually type in DC promo DC promo uh, and if we wanted to, we could click OK, and this would also um, install it as a domain controller. Um, we're actually not going to do that. I'm going to click Cancel, and we're going to go back to Manage Your Server and Add or Remove a Role. So I'm going to click on the Add or Remove a Role. OK, now if you have a look, uh, the wizard starts up, and uh, it talks about some preliminary steps. These are things that you should do before you actually start uh, installing it as a domain controller. Um, the things that we've already done, uh, install modems and network cards, attach necessary cables, make sure it's connected to the internet, uh, turn on peripherals, printers or whatever you might want to use. Uh, and the next one I think is quite important. It says have your Windows Server 2003 setup CD available or know your in-network installation path. Okay, so um, as we're installing it, it's actually going to need some files off the CD. So having the CD is very important. Okay, let's click next. And what it's doing now is just detecting our uh, local area network settings, see what's actually on the network, making sure we're connected. Okay, and now we've got the configuration options, and actually we've got a couple of options. We've got the first one that says typical configuration for a first server, um, and it simplifies, as it says, it simplifies the setup of a network, um, and it sets up a domain controller, uh, installs DNS, and also DHCP. Um, the other option, com custom configuration, allows us to decide what we want to do. Now, usually I guess if it was the first setup, we might want to do... Um, the typical configuration. Uh, actually, we're going to go for the custom configuration, uh, which is the second option. And we'll click Next. Uh, and here you can see what you can add. There's a whole list of server roles and whether it's configured. So the first one, File Server, it says yes, it's configured. All the rest are not configured. Now, uh, we actually want it to be a domain controller. That's the main aim of today. So we'll click on Domain Controller. And if we click on Next, 
um, it says run the Active Directory installation wizard to set up this server as a domain controller which is what we want to do and I'll click next and you can see that it automatically jumps into the Active Directory installation wizard now the Active Directory what is it this is a, a I guess is a, a new term that we've just uh, got now Active Directory is basically Microsoft's directory database for their networks it stores information about resources on the network and it, I guess it provides a means of centralizing um, and organizing and managing and controlling whatever resources that are part of that network okay so this is the wizard to actually install Active Directory the process of installing Active Directory makes uh, the computer the server that we're on a domain controller so I'm going to go ahead and click next um, it, this talks us about system compatibility um, uh, and I'll just talk, click on next okay um, and this is the type of domain controller um, we've got two choices we can either have a domain controller for a new domain or an additional domain controller for an existing domain an existing domain being a network we already have now uh, we don't have a network so we're going to be domain controller for a new domain and click next then it says create a domain in a new forest that's the first option the second option is child domain in an existing domain tree and the third option domain tree in an existing forest now for some of you this might be um, new terminology the domain is obviously uh, the network it's the name for the network now um, trees and forests obviously a tree is actually uh, a collection of domains within the same domain namespace and a forest is a, a collection of trees uh, within that now with our one that we're actually starting here we don't have an existing domain tree we don't have an existing network that we want it to become part of or under so actually it's going to be the first option domain in a new forest um, we could, if we had an existing forest, if we had uh, an organization that already had domains um, and we wanted it to be a domain but a separate domain but within that forest, uh, that same namespace, then we could actually choose a third option or possibly the second option. Um, but as it is with this example I'm showing you, we're, we're going from scratch. We've literally got a domain in a new forest. We don't have an existing network or an existing namespace that we want to use.